On this episode of the Jeep Talk Show, the gang goes nostalgic and we take a look back at some of her favorite moments of 2015. We'll play our last voicemails of 2015 and get a few of your last minute reviews as well. And guess who's having a birthday and right around Christmas? Oh, wait a minute. I know this one. Uh, it's, uh, baby Jesus. <laughs> Each of us are going to go over our New Year's resolutions for our Jeeps, of course. Get carried away. We're going to wrap up 2015 with episode 209 of the Jeep Talk Show. You're listening to a 4x4, 4x4 Radio Network podcast. Are you ready? It's the Jeep Talk Show. With Tammy on Wrangler, Tony and Josh on Cherokee. So sit back, strap in, and brace yourself. First week in G. Well, Jeep had a lot going on in 2015, and over the years, I've been proud to help bring you up to speed on some of the other aspects of the Jeep world that you otherwise may not pay attention to. That's not to say over here at the Jeep Talk Show, we know best as to what you should or shouldn't know about in the Jeep or off-roading world, but we try to be fair and impartial, unless it clashes with our nostalgic feelings towards one name badge or another, in which case I will, of course, tell you exactly how I feel and what I'm thinking. <laughs> With that said, I can assure you, this week in Jeep will continue to be a feature for the Jeep Talk Show in 2016. As for this year, we saw a lot of recalls, a year of recalls, but not just with our brand, industry-wide. It was more than automotive history has ever seen before. We saw technological advances in things like recovery, fuel efficiency, lighting, and wireless and Bluetooth vehicle infotainment. We also saw, we also, which also we saw, lead to some catastrophic security issues. We saw a year of deaths, fires, crashes, and thefts. We saw lawsuits, and litigations, regulations, and settlements. We saw trail closures and cataclysmic weather that touched many of our lives. But 2015 wasn't all bad. We saw an automotive company set itself apart from the rest and set and break records month after month. We saw a brand change from a good old local boy to a global entity that cannot be ignored. We saw concepts and throwbacks. We saw triumph, victory, and acts of generosity. We saw our Jeep Brotherhood performing rescues when others couldn't. We saw our fellow Jeepers this year performing amazing acts of heroism, bravery, and courage. So my fellow Jeepers, in the coming year, I'll be giving you more of these kinds of stories. The kinds of stories that make us cringe, laugh, dream, and ask questions. Big thanks to all of you out there. Continue to help out by submitting stories to This Week in Jeep. And I want to give an extra special thanks to John, Jake, and Steve, who have helped me out an immense amount over the last year by submitting stories on almost a weekly basis. Without those guys... This job would be a lot harder. Thank you all, especially those last three, for helping me out this year. Appreciate it. Keep up the great work, and I look forward to helping you guys out more, bringing this kind of stuff to you in 2016. If you have a response to any one of our stories over the years, or you'd like to share something with us, you'd think that we have something we should be reporting on, let us know by sending us an email to info at jeeptalkshow.com. You know, there's quite a bit of uh, heroism going on with the uh, the winter storms that have been coming through here recently. I read something yep. about uh, some Jeepers out there uh, helping people out that were uh, uh, stranded on the roadways. And uh, I think that is a wonderful thing. I'm always proud to hear about that. I'm always proud to, to be a member of the Jeep family when I hear something like that. Definitely. You're listening to Jeep Talk Show, Talk Show. the number one Jeep podcast at my mom's house xjtalk.com it's where you go when you're not off-road well speaking of different sites of uh, that aren't uh, the jeep talk show let me tell you about the 4x4 radio network the 4x4 radio network is a conglomeration of four podcasts uh, the jeep talk show the 4x4 podcast muddy microphone and uh, the center steer podcast and center steer is all about uh, land rovers oh i didn't say range rover thank you john the beatings have uh, worked out. So uh, go over there to uh, 4x4radionetwork.com. Just press the play button. And, uh, well, you'll have a blast. You'll have all kinds of things to listen to. Like I said, the Land Rovers, uh, Jeeps from the Jeep Talk Show. And, uh, well, there's some really good cooking segments uh, at the 4x4 radio. Uh, <laughs> I mean, the 4x4, 4x4 podcast. These things are too close together. Just go to 4x4radionetwork.com. Hey, yeah, speaking of channels that you guys need to check out, you need to make sure you're checking out and subscribing to our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Jeep Talk Show. 
If you haven't subscribed or you have subscribed to our old channel, you haven't moved, made the move yet, well, make sure that you subscribe to our new channel and, uh, and I'll tell a friend as well. It's a great way to spread the word about a great podcast for the off-roading world. You know, we love hearing from all of you. You know, so be sure and call our voicemail at 530-675-4102. Or you can jump over to our website, jeeptalkshow.com, and leave us a message. Just click on the send questions and comment button on the right-hand side. And tonight, you know what? We have several voicemails to share with you. Hey, this is Tony. And I'm Tammy. And this is Josh. And you've reached our 24-7 voicemail line. You guys know what to do, so at the beep, leave your message. Hey, guys. It's Cody. You said you wanted some uh, voicemails from any, any time, any place. And y'all, you'll never believe what I'm doing right now. Oh, boy. I'm at the gym. Oh, thank I've goodness. got about a <laughs> 0.25 miles on the treadmill, and I've got about 0.25 more to go. Wish me luck. Bye. <laughs> you know, I, we, I was trying to remember. We had this this uh, voicemail from a while back, and I was trying to remember if this was from nine months ago. <laughs> <laughs> Could have been. <laughs> but no, it wasn't. He was on the treadmill. <laughs> oh, for uh, for those who uh, are just joining our show, uh, Cody is actually a new daddy. <laughs> yes, he I is. I think uh, yes. Tony might have been referring to some conceptual type of uh, instances. <laughs> Cody was, also does our, um, what's his Grand Adventure. Oh, yes, the Grand oh, Adventure. I, I, I remember, I remember the name. The I know. <laughs> I remember the name, Cody. Remember that. I'm, I was year. thinking Trail Chasers. <laughs> trail you guys chasers. have to check out TrailChasers.net. That's, yeah. that's Cody's baby, his other baby, TrailChasers.net. Great place to go. Check it out. It's a beautiful website. The only reason he has anything to do with us. No, he's a good guy. We really appreciate him uh, being here. He also fills in for Josh whenever Josh is out getting spider bites and stuff. Things like that. Yeah. I think he did he fill in for me one time too, I think. Yeah, he did. Uh, I'm not sure what bit you. Um, so, uh, let's, uh, let's get over to Tim. Hey, Tony, Josh, and Tammy. It's Tim from Torrance. I have a question for you guys. You seem to be really in love with your vehicles. Um, some of you, maybe more than others, but I don't know. <laughs> I'm not judging. <laughs> but my question to you, each of you is, um, have you named your vehicles? Um, because usually, you know, you've got a name, uh, for your, for your vehicular love. But anyway, I just uh, was curious to see if you guys uh, had names. All right, bye. I'll let you guys go first. Oh, named. Oh, okay. I I, I thought he said maimed. Like, yeah, <laughs> I've got tons of carnage. I've maimed right. my Jeep several times. No. Ah, named. Well, you know, I have been told, I asked this question a long time ago when I first got my Jeep, and some people say it's like split 50-50. 50% of the people say, you are not supposed to name your Jeep. Somebody else is supposed to name your Jeep. And the other people say you can name your Jeep. So I guess it depends on which camp you're in. It's my Jeep, damn it. I know. <laughs> and the name is, when other people name it, it's supposed to come from something that you've done or your Jeep has done. So um, I'm in the camp where somebody else named my Jeep. Well, that's not uh, a bad camp. I mean, it's kind of nice. No. Less work for you, right? Right. Because I was struggling. Um, so, and my Jeep's name Barney, is Plum Crazy. Grimace, what is it? Not a limb here. What is it, Tammy? Plum Crazy. Oh, that makes Plum sense. Plum Crazy. Uh, that's yeah. actually the color purple on my Jeep. Oh, I forgot about the purple. Yeah, that makes yeah. even more sense. So it's got a, <laughs> a double meaning. Yes. <laughs> I'm Plum Crazy and my Jeep is Plum Crazy. I don't necessarily have a name for my Jeep. Uh, I, I do consider it the Northwest 99 XJ. Uh, it just so happens to be oh, my boy. username on several forums, <laughs> including xjtalk.com. But uh, yeah, that's, that's about as close as I've gotten to naming my rig. Honestly, I thought, okay, if I get a personalized license plate, that's probably what it's going to be. I, I don't know if you guys know it, but Josh is kind of a big deal there in the Northwest. So that's the... Northwest ninety nine XJ. D H E. Yeah. How many how many spaces do I get to work with here? There's Cedric the Entertainer, and now there's Josh the ninety nine. <laughs> and it's just Northwest ninety nine XJ. 
<laughs> yeah, you need to go to only one name status, Josh. Yeah, I'm going to have <laughs> to be the new share or something. <laughs> well, you know, I, I never, I've never even thought about naming my vehicles other than mine. You know, I'm, I'm, only, yeah, I'm an only child. Mine. Yes, it's mine. I'm an only child, so I've that's mine. These. That's mine. This that's mine. mine. Uh, and uh, I put my finger in that dip. It's my dip now. But uh, but seriously, uh, the only thing I can think of, and this is the confusing thing to me, machines are always feminine. I mean, you don't take a warship out to war and it be a, a, a male. Joe. It's a female. It's a female that you got to take care of the female because the that that's what keeps you safe. That's the the mom, so to speak. Because uh, if you're on a ship, it has to protect you and uh, defend you. So, uh, you know, I've, I've, my Jeep is a, is a girl. Uh, so I don't really have a name for her. I mean, I think some suggestions were queenie, um, but I don't want it to be a trailer queen. So I, no, I, I really don't have a name for my Jeep. It's just, uh, like I said, mine, mine, right. <laughs> Sound like those pigeons on, um, oh, those yeah. seagulls on uh, seagulls little Nemo. Mine? Nemo. Mine? Mine? Yeah, mine? Yeah, that was mine? very funny. Very yeah. imaginative. Well, let's get over to a, uh, another voicemail that we received. Well, well I'll just let you listen. Hey there, Tony, Tammy, and Josh. It's CPO from Jeep's Needs. Uh, first of all, I just wanted to wish you guys a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Thank you. And also Merry Christmas to all of your listeners as well. Uh, I wanted to say I appreciate you guys taking the time to review and give an honest assessment of our product, the DLA, the D-Lift Adapter. As manufacturers and developers of a product, we want everybody to love it, but that's not always going to be the case. And so we appreciate the fair assessment that you guys are giving and also the broad variety of experience and background that you guys bring to your podcast is also helpful there. So I did have a chance to listen to the podcast uh, where you guys uh, basically introduced the product and uh, and gave initial feedback. Uh, Tammy, uh, the video interview turned out great. Thank you so much for doing that with me. And, and thank you for helping uh, with that little bit of product development. Um, that turned out to be a huge blessing to uh, have a challenge with that particular D-ring because it let us get in front of that before uh, we had a customer who had that problem. So uh, thanks again for that. Josh, I'd listen to you give the argument about experience uh, and how somebody with experience might not uh, find value in the product. And I was kind of arguing with you as I was driving down the road listening to the podcast, <laughs> although you probably didn't hear me because of the sound of the wind buffeting against my windshield because of my 50-inch light bar. But um, I was kind of giving you some counterpoints, and I just wanted to call in and say, hey, I appreciate that perspective, although my argument is I don't think you can be too experienced to appreciate additional safety. My high lift jack that I use in all of those videos and demonstrations – I've owned that for 20 years and I've used it in a variety of ways. And if you've ever had a vehicle slip off just once, uh, you kind of get that pucker factor going. And I don't care if you've been doing it for 20 years or one year, you can still kind of appreciate the fact that that's just something you don't have to think about anymore if you can lock your jack to your vehicle. So I do appreciate the perspective that more experienced people who are very familiar and have a lot of high lift jack time under their belts might not feel the need for it. But I just don't want to draw a line in the sand that if you're experienced, this doesn't help you. Uh, only beginners are going to find value because I don't necessarily find that to be the case. That's like saying uh, experienced wheelers don't care about seatbelts. Actually, it's the experienced wheelers who understand more so the value of a seatbelt because they know anything can go wrong at any time. So anyway, I just wanted to make that point. And yeah, we get you on price. I'm a jeeper first. I'm a consumer. I browse the websites looking at Jeep products and think, my God, why is that so expensive? I'm the same way as you guys. Unfortunately, there's so much that goes into it, not just the manufacturing, um, but we've got product development. We've got a website to run. We've got patent fees and attorney fees and all kinds of other stuff that goes into running a business, unfortunately, that gets rolled into final product costing. And uh, you guys don't need to hear all that crap from me. But what you do want to hear is that we're listening to you and we're trying to find ways to bring the costs down as best we can. So here's what we're going to do. Starting January 1st, 2016, ringing in the new year, we're going to eat the price of shipping on all DLA purchases from JeepsNeeds.com. On top of that, for the Jeep Talk Show listeners, we're going to offer through January 15th, all right, so just a couple of weeks into the new year, 
a $15 discount. And it's JTS2016 is the code. JTS, Jeep Talk Show, 2016. That'll be good through January 15th, 2016. So you guys can take advantage of free shipping and save 15 bucks for a couple of weeks into the new year. But after that, free shipping uh, for everyone. Uh, we're just trying to find ways to make this more accessible to the off-roading community because we see the value in it and we know once it gets in the market, you guys will as well. So anyway, thanks for all the time. I really appreciate it. Looking forward to, uh, to seeing what Tony has to say about the product. And Josh, I'll challenge you. Um, with your level of experience, I would love it if you could check out the product and maybe even come up with a creative way to use it that we hadn't even considered. <laughs> maybe there's some circumstance or scenario that I haven't been in that you might go, you know what? This product might fit that niche. Anyway, thanks, guys. Appreciate it. And uh, I'll talk to you soon. Well, I just want to make sure that that uh, Chris, you, and everybody at Jeep's Needs understands that it wasn't me. I always loved the product. <laughs> I, I think it's great. I have a, I do have a problem with the price. Uh, uh, you know, and, and I sure really appreciate what you guys are doing to, to help address that. And I think that everybody knows that over a period of time, uh, whenever uh, costs go down uh, as you make more of these things, that sometimes that, uh, that reduction is passed on to people. Chris hasn't told me anything. I think we all know this about electronics, and hopefully that will happen with these too. Uh, like I said, I think it's a really cool product. Now I keep looking down because I have one. It's not going to show up very well on the on the green screen, but uh, this is the one that uh, Tammy had, and she sent to me. It's not black. It just looks that way because of the green screen effect. But uh, I have it right here, and uh, we actually even have uh, Tammy's signature on it. And uh, we we actually uh, did that because we're going to be giving this one away. But before it goes to uh, one of you. It's going to go to Josh, oh. and Josh is going to get to try this thing out and see what he thinks about it firsthand. Because really, to be fair, you shouldn't uh, criticize a uh, a product without uh, putting your hands on it. Well, it's okay to criticize. We all can criticize things that we don't have direct uh, interaction with. But I think it's a we have the ability for each of us to put our hands on it. So so why not? So I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna put a big disclaimer out here uh, and say uh, CPO, be careful what you wish for. Uh, and with that being <laughs> said, I'm gonna utter the next two words that many many people out there fear me saying, and that is I know exactly what you're gonna say. <laughs> Challenge accepted. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no CPO, uh, I, absolutely. I really appreciate you calling back because I knew I was actually hoping you're gonna take me to task on that a little bit. I did kind of preface things saying that, you know, these are my opinions and that I know I'm going to piss a lot of people off um, by taking this stance. Uh, but then and you I said did, it anyway, mention, knowing well, did, that you were yeah. going to piss people off. You said it anyway. I, I, I know. I know. It's, <laughs> it's never stopped me before. So, yeah. No, this is but, great, uh, but we, we need honesty. We need to, yes. people to know we're going to be honest about the products. And that's, and that's one thing that I've always prided myself on. I've, I've said this from, from day one, that if you want us to review your product, we're not going to put on our knee pads and, and bury our nose and, and give you a lot of fluff. We're going to give an honest, real-world opinion with real-world views. No fluff That here. contradicts a lot of people's opinions, and it doesn't always go over very well. But that's what you guys are looking for. You're, you're not looking for, for a commercial. Basically, you're not, you're looking for what the guy next door is going to tell you about X, Y, and Z product. And, and that's what we try and do for you guys. And, and oftentimes it, it comes with very strong opinions that kind of, uh, go against the grain of the, uh, of the status quo or, or, you know, uh, a lot of people's opinions. And, and, and we take that risk, uh, but, uh, it's all in the, all in the fairness that we're going to be giving you something uh, accurate and something that you can rely on. And I think the cool thing about the three of us is the different levels of experience we have. Tony and Josh have extreme amounts of experience when it comes to Jeeping and building your Jeep. And, you know, I'm just getting started. So everything is fresh and new. And, you know, I'm very inexperienced with things. So the different levels of experience we have, I think, is a really great thing. And I'll just correct you real quick. I haven't been off road that much. I've done a lot of work on my Jeep. I've replaced a lot of things. I've um, put a lot of modifications. 
Uh, I have been off-road in the past. It's not a lot in my Jeep. I need to gain experience with that. But uh, So I am experienced, but I would not say I'm at the same level of experience that Josh is uh, going off-road. I, I oh, think a I've, lot of our listeners out there know this, and I don't want to take uh, accolades that I don't deserve. Well, I've got my Jeep uh, stuck more times than I care to share with you people, so <laughs> I can definitely uh, see where, where this device is, uh, could come in handy for a lot of people in a lot of different situations. And, and, and I've, I definitely wanted to, to state the value of this. This, this would be a very valuable uh, device to have in, in many different situations. Uh, a lot of situations, you know, that being said, a lot of situations can be avoided, but uh, oftentimes we find ourselves with even the best intentions somewhere we didn't intend to be. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and having all the safety and all the tools that we can to get our rig out as best and efficiently and, of course, as safely as possible uh, is paramount above everything else. So, Josh, when you get this thing, uh, I'm going to put some clear coat over uh, Tammy's uh, signature and my signature. Okay. But don't forget to autograph it, and you're sure. going to be you're going to be the one sending it out to uh, one lucky winner, and Ooh. we'll we'll be giving you uh, updates. Uh, it won't be somebody on the show, Josh. It's going to be somebody a listener. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm not kidding you, man. Uh, I, I'm sorry. I would hold this up for you guys to see that are watching the. Uh, don't the drop live it show. in your lap. Good Lord. We're it going it to really isn't emergency. that heavy. Uh, <laughs> it, it, I was really surprised. I expected it to be heavier, uh -huh. but uh, it's really not that heavy, which is actually about five pounds, uh, uh, which is actually a, uh, actually a good okay. thing whenever you have a missile in the back of your Jeep coming towards your head. Mm. Um, but uh, it's very, very well constructed. I mean, it is, uh, I, I mean, it, it is just one piece of bent metal. And everything fits together very nice. It's it's very well uh, manufactured. It's it's a very nice product. I certainly understand uh, why the uh, there's a price tag on it that there is. Um, it's just for what it does. Uh, I'm hoping they get, they can get the price down uh, substantially. Uh, I would love to have one, uh, but uh, and I can definitely see the the use in it, especially if you can uh, leave it on the uh, on the high lift jack, which I believe is is one of the things you can do. So, but I'll find out more about that. I just received this today, so I haven't even had it outside. I came in, there was a package. I went, I was trying to think, what did I order? We got everything for Christmas. What is that? <laughs> Late Christmas it, present. It looks like something from eBay because it's a USPS box. And I went, what did I order from eBay? And then I, and then I, I thought for a little bit as I was uh, eating dinner and I went, oh, that's the DLA. So sure enough. So looking forward to uh, putting this on my Jeep, uh, putting on the, uh, the Wrangler. And I may even try it out on the 99 that has no tow points and see how it does uh, just up underneath the bumper, uh, the stock oh, bumper. Be very careful. So anyway, we really appreciate that voicemail. And uh, uh, I'm glad you took Josh to task. And uh, somebody's got to do that every so often. Yeah, yeah. It's going to take me down a notch or two every now and again. Occasionally, I get a little big for my britches. <laughs> no. <laughs> Hey, that's where our reviews come into play. We can encourage you guys to give us constructive criticism all the time, even a pat on the back. Mm -hmm. if we so deserve it. Well, you got a couple of, uh, we got a couple of reviews from you guys uh, since the holiday, and we'd like to share those with you now. Tammy, bring us in. Yeah, the first one is from YouTube. And originally, this we read this one last week from Lifted Off Road, L F T D Off Road. He was like, wow, thanks for mentioning me, RCS or RC Smoke 52. On the show, I got so excited, <laughs> I had to tell the wife. I never know which profile I'm on. So anyway, good show, guys. <laughs> Keep up the good cheer and stay LFTD, lifted. Yeah, so basically we mentioned uh, uh, lifted off-road RC Smoke uh, last week on last week's episode. And this was uh, their their comment on our uh, uh, episode two eight uh, Christmas uh, special uh, comment section. So we read the comments under YouTube, on Twitter, Facebook, uh, even iTunes. So um, please feel free to comment anywhere, and you may be hearing your uh, review or your comment on the show, even if it's bad. I, mean, I think we probably have some pretty good fun with bad ones. Oh yeah, no, definitely. And we're, of course, on the Twitter. Uh, we uh, get some stuff from the Twitter all the time, guys. R-C-O-S-K-A. I have no idea. Uh, R-C Oscar. Ooh, maybe his name's Oscar. He goes by Oscar. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, at Socks Rocked. Uh, at Socks Rocked. I'm just butchering this. R-O-C-K-D. 
Anyways, uh, he says, Merry Christmas, y'all. Love y'all. <laughs> well, I can feel the love from here, and we uh, we love you too. All of you guys out there who uh, listen to us and who will follow us on Twitter, who are very active with our social media accounts, guys, make sure that you are spreading the word and telling a friend. Using the hashtag when you guys are uh, showing out those tweets, make sure you use the hashtag Jeep Talk Show in there as well. Uh, we can help spread the word that way as well. Well, Josh, uh, you want to give somebody, uh, give the, our, our listeners a little tidbit of what's coming up? Yeah, there's been a lot of buzz lately over a debated issue of the longevity of some of the Pentastar engines. And we've talked about this in the shows recently in the past. And, and well, there's, uh, we've, I guess you can say we've uh, kind of poked the hornet's nest, as it were. But namely, the 3.6 liter is what we have talked about. It's found in many of the JKs and the JKUs. We want you guys to stay locked in to the Jeep Talk Show, where we're going to hear some firsthand testimony about this very issue coming up in the next couple of episodes. So stay tuned. And we're even going to uh, be able to tell you uh, what may happen as a warning sign before disaster strikes. So stay Deep tuned. Talk show exclusive, people. Yeah, so stay tuned. Oh, no. Cody's a year older. They said it couldn't be done. <laughs> yes. <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> oh, but yes, now he is uh, Cody from TrailChasers.net. He uh, he's not only having a birthday this year. Uh, he of course uh, is a new daddy. Uh, I want to give him not only congratulations once again to the latest addition to the family, but also a happy now belated uh, birthday because it is his birthday as we are recording this. Uh, but uh, for our podcast audience out there, you guys are going to be hearing this a little bit later. And chances are Cody is hearing this after the fact as well. So, Cody, happy birthday, man. Hope it was a good one. Uh, it sounds like you got an early birthday present this year, one that uh, probably is going to be hard to beat. Definitely. Happy birthday, Cody. Happy birthday, Cody. And, Cody, for your birthday, we have something very, he's getting nervous, very special for you. Let's listen to it now. Happy birthday. You. Happy birthday, Mr. Trailchasers.net. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Cody. Now here's something we all look forward to each and every week. Hearing from the mind of Nikki G. Ah, uh, yes. From the mind of Nikki G. Hey, this is Nikki G, and uh, I know Tammy said she owned a Dodge Journey before she owned her Jeep, and uh, I visit my daughter in Wilmington. I fly in and rent a car all the time, and my they didn't have an economy car, so they upgraded me for free to a van, and yeah, it's a Dodge Journey, and so I figured I'd give a quick review in case anybody out there is thinking about trading their Jeep in for a Dodge Journey. Uh, first thing that gets you, it's like a pencil. It's a mile long. Uh, it sort of looks like a, a refrigerator had sex with a tube of toothpaste. And uh, It's like a four-door minivan, I guess. But you get in it, and you can't see anywhere but straight ahead. There, there's like no visibility in this thing. You look through the back in the rear view mirror and all you see is the headrests from the seat, the back seat. And uh, another thing that grabs you when you first get in it is the factory smell in it. It smells sort of like a wet fart with just a hint of despair. And uh, driving in this thing kind of reminds you of uh, riding a refrigerator down a flight of stairs. It's I can't imagine anybody who would buy this thing, especially for as much money as they are. Hey, this is Nikki G, and uh, I haven't called in anything funny yet because I haven't listened to the show this week. Uh, I started to listen to it, but you guys have such a soothing, calming voice that it just puts me right to sleep. And uh, the unfortunate part is I usually listen to the podcast while I'm driving to work. So on a similar note, does anybody know how to get this mailbox out from my grill? All right, guys, I'll uh, chat you later. Have a good one. Bye. Well, 
let's see. I can't say ho, ho, ho. What what should I say for New Year's? Cheers. Cheers. Uh, yeah. I'm, I'm British. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers. Or greetings and salutations. <laughs> Llamifications. <laughs> well, it's uh, it's almost 2016, guys. And, it is. Uh, we've been, been meeting here by the campfire for uh, well, probably around 52 times. I was going to say, it's been about a year now, at least a year's worth of episodes as far as uh, yeah. the crow flies or the weeks go, anyways. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, uh, looking forward to uh, a 2016, and uh, boy, 2015 was great. And uh, you know, I don't know if you guys ever do Jeep resolutions or not, but uh, you know, um, I've done the New Year's resolution thing in the past. You know, it's like, well, you know, this year I'm going to use that gym membership I've been paying for. <laughs> you know, one of those things. Pounds. You know, I'm going to I'm going to resolve to to shave a little more often. You know, try and get rid of that some of that scruff uh, quite as often. You know, things like that. I've 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 made proclamations, I've made resolutions, and I have failed year after year. But, you know, it's one of those things where if you don't set goals, you know, you don't, if you aim at nothing, you're going to hit it every time. I I heard that quote here recently. I like that. Yeah, you know, and it's it's one of those things where, okay, it's like, I I, got to set at least something. I I One goal for 2016, this is going to be my resolution, you know, and, and, and I try and make it happen. I give it the old college try. And whether I succeed or I fail, at least I try. So what is my Jeep one? resolution? I, you know, I, I, you know, we, we've been talking about this kind of behind the scenes for a week now, uh, just about. <laughs> and uh, and, and my, my resolution for 2016 is to uh, get my Jeep up and running again. There you go. Now, that's uh, that, that's going to go, uh, of course, without saying. But uh, no, my, my resolution for this year is to get, the, get my Jeep out into some areas that I have not been before. I've had a kind of a bad habit of sticking kind of with what I know, uh, staying close to home. Oh, that uh, makes so sense. Speak. And, and I'd like to get the Jeep out um, and get some long distance uh, stuff. There's, there's some stuff that's a good three, four, six hours away even uh, that, I, that I'd like to, to wheel out to, um, drive out to. There's also the, uh, the Oregon Discovery Trail. Uh, I can basically travel from uh, the one border of Oregon to the other border of Oregon, north Fun. and south, uh, and, and rarely hit pavement. So that's uh, th- that's one of those things My where I, I would love to do that this yeah. year. I'd love to make it back down to the Rubicon, um, and this time with my own Jeep. Uh, so th- those are some those are some of the the more lofty goals, some resolutions that that I'm going to try and aim for and try and hit uh, for 2016. How about you guys? Well, for me, it's continuing to fortify my undercarriage. I'm thinking of getting a. A different EVAP canister, skid plate, and Josh, cover your ears. Oh. Um, I want to get some diff covers and paint them purple. <laughs> purple. Oh, purple. Purple. Purple diff covers. <laughs> Mine are red, or at least the front one is. Um, and it, the rear one, at least. And then I want to start my savings plan for my new lift and tires. Um, I'm, I'd like to buy the Clayton lift a lot of money um and i'm looking into um, some tires still researching it you know and a lot of people use the the nitto is that how you say it nitto nitto the they're mud grapplers but i don't know i'm still researching that so start a savings plan and then just recently actually cpo from jeeps needs he has some badges on his jeep and it's from the jeep badge of honor program and there's different trails all over the country that if you run them while you're using the jeep badge of honor app jeep will send you some badges that you can put on your jeep anyway there's three trails at roche creek um that you can get these for one of them is trail 11 which i can for sure do do with my jeep and then the other trail is Crawler's Ridge. Um, I might possibly be able to do this. So I emailed Kyle at Mouse Creek. He was the guy who did my 101 and 201 training courses. He says, it's a very challenging trail without a good spotter. You'll be slamming down hard on the undercarriage and dragging the sides bad. When I take a stock vehicle through... It is a lot of stacking, spotting, and patience. So those are my resolutions, my Jeep resolutions. 
I bet you'd have a lot of fun with that trail. That that sounds like it would be a lot of technical stuff, and it would be a great learning experience. Always Ridge. That that sounds like something I I've got to see for myself. I yeah. uh, I envy you you being that close to uh, Roush Creek. I've seen it several yeah. times on Extreme Four by Four, and uh, there's no way I'll ever I'll ever make it up there. Yeah, uh, seriously, a little little too far out for me, likely uh, unless I you know win the lottery or something like that. But uh, God, yeah, it'd be it'd be nice to get out there. You know, it's funny you you mentioned uh, you know, taking a stock vehicle uh, through a trail like that and how it's a lot of stacking, spotting, and patience. I. I I got a story for that. I, I want to hear from Tony first about about his Jeep resolution, but I got a story for you guys about about taking a stock Jeep through a trail that maybe you shouldn't have. <laughs> it's, it's funny. I saw a, a thing about uh, somebody taking a 1983 BMW off-road through uh, oh, a lot of trails. <laughs> <laughs> so I figure if, if, you, can, uh, if you can take a, a vehicle that's not off-road, but anyway... Uh, I've I've given this a lot of thought and, and really a lot of thought over the years to resolutions, um, especially back in my my days where I was going to the gym and uh, I was you know four or five times a day in the gym, working out and every January, you'd see a huge crowd come totally. filter into the gym, and then by March it was all back to normal. So uh, with that in mind, my resolution is not a damn thing. <laughs> <laughs> I so guarantee you, you I'm going to hit any nothing. Jeep resolutions or personal? Any. I, okay. I think that the resolutions on the whole are a load of crap. <laughs> I mean, if you have personal goals, those goals you should have all year long. Right. Reach those goals, move on to the next one. So uh, I always have things I want to do. Uh, sometimes they vary with uh, my mood and interests. Uh, and uh, but just coming up with a resolution to go along with the crowd because it's the end of the year, the the beginning of a new year. No, uh, you know, sorry, you guys can do it. You listeners, you like resolutions? I think it's great. Not me. I I, I do things in the time frame that I'm going to do them, and the the beginning of a year it doesn't mean anything. It's just a, a changing of the date. Yeah, I can see that. I, I've I've taken a similar stance in the past, saying, "Ah, screw it. I'm not yeah. doing anything you know, this year." And, That's the way uh, I am with my personal. I'm like, you know, I have my bucket list, my fifty before fifty list, and you know, you have your own personal goals. But um, as far as personal Jeep res- or personal resolutions, I'm kind of the same way. But with my Jeep, I do everything for my Jeep. <laughs> I think we're, we're we, we are true Jeep owners that we're look at this we're we're putting our Jeep resolutions I ahead know, of our before own. Ourselves. You know, we 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 think about our Jeeps before before we think of ourselves. Well, it's an extension <laughs> of our personality, isn't it? Yeah. Well, it's extension of my something. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> I've never understood those uh, those comments I've about you know where people talk about the, the size of your penis has to do with hey, the Josh, size of your vehicle. Can we talk about your Jeep story now? <laughs> yeah. so, so Tony, you're in a out. timeout. Uh, I was, I was up in the, the Tillamook State Forest. Uh, it's an area here uh, west of me, uh, out towards the Oregon coast. And it's uh, up in a mountain range, and there's a lot of, uh, a lot of interesting, interesting trails, a lot of very challenging trails and obstacles up there as well. It is a, uh, uh, a, an authorized wheeling area. It is a, a sanctioned off-road park, as it were. Um, but it's publicly owned, so everybody gets to enjoy it. Uh, there is a varying degree of trails up there, including one uh, which I broke my transfer case wide open on uh, a couple of years back. Uh, you guys might uh, remember that. For those of you who are longtime listeners of the show, uh, I've got a bunch of pictures online of that as, as well to share with you guys. So, uh, but anyways, uh, in this one trail section, it was called Crushers. And uh, for anybody who's from this area and who's familiar with that uh, section of trail, uh, it, it is very large boulders. I think the probably the smallest boulder up in there uh, is about three feet in diameter. And it is a field of them. Imagine if you put two football fields together uh, and made you know pretty much one or two routes in and out of this field of boulders, and uh, and that's what Crushers is. And uh, there there's several guys that I that I know that play in there fairly regularly. And this is the kind of trail where even to get through the filter to make sure that you have the right kind of equipment to even make it onto the the main section of trail, uh, you need a minimum of two lockers and 35 inch tires. Well. A buddy of mine who had an LJ, uh, he still has it, in fact, 
uh, I only see him a couple times a year and we uh, meet together for some uh, weekend long wheeling excursions and stuff. So um, it, it's always an interesting and, and fun uh, weekend out with him. But he took his LJ on 32s through this thing. And uh, it, it was interesting because he drug that poor little LJ up and over and through everything. Now, we probably mm-hmm. spotted him for the better part of three and a half hours. And wow. he made it through there with zero body damage. Awesome. Now, he did bang up a lot of armor. <laughs> I will say that. And right at the very end, he broke an axle shaft. Uh, but he made it through nonetheless. Now, it's one of those things where you, you really do have to have a good spotter. You really do have to have a firm grasp on your vehicle's capabilities and have a pretty decent skill set of your own to pull something like that off. And we did it. It took a long freaking time, <laughs> but we did it. And, and he was able to get out under his own power after we kind of did a, uh, uh, you know, a mid-trail axle swap or an axle shaft swap. Um, but again, that was relatively easily, uh, easily done. Had uh, people with tools. He had his own tools, had spare parts uh, handy. This is the kind of guy who kind of expects these sort of things to happen and prepares himself and his vehicle uh, for them if, when they do. And, and, of course, it, it happened with this trail. But just goes to show you, you, you don't have to necessarily have, you know, tens of thousands of dollars invested in your Jeep and, and tons of equipment and everything to, to make sure that, you know, to, to do a trail properly. You do want to have good gear, but you also want to have a good set of skill set, you know, good skills and a good spotter. Those yeah. alone, good skills and good spotter, and with the right amount of armor, can pretty much get you through just about anything. Josh, you know, I hear that over and over again about the spotter. Yeah. Having a good spotter and as the driver to listen to that spotter. Yes. I, I will say from my own experience, though, because I've, I've, I've entrusted myself, my vehicle, and, and people in my vehicle to somebody who I've never met before in my <laughs> well, life. Well, there you go. I was going to say. And, and, and it you have to is, trust it, that spotter and know that spotter. You do. You put a lot of faith into They have a nothing to lose. <laughs> and, unless it's a buddy who you wield with you know, frequently, who's somebody who knows you, who knows your wheeling style, your vehicle's capabilities, your own skill set, et cetera. You know, you, you oftentimes will run into somebody on the trail who has never seen you before, has never seen your vehicle in action before, doesn't know you from Adam, and, and is now in charge of <laughs> making sure that you can make it through this, this come obstacle on, come on in up. one piece. <laughs> little left, 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 left. No, no, I, will say I was just scratching my ear. Where are you going? <laughs> yeah, I have put my trust in a lot of people, and knock on wood, I've come out on top. See, I would have a problem with that. I have not been in a situation where I had a spotter. I was just oh. following the Jeep in front of me. Yeah. And I don't know that I could have that level of trust that you guys have shown people that uh, you, don't who they don't, you don't know how many beers they've had. You don't know who they are. They're just standing out there. I don't know if, uh, Tammy, you may not have seen it. Josh, I bet you've seen this video. It's in Australia. It's a, uh, I think it's a Pathfinder coming down a near vertical embankment, pulling a trailer, one of those little four-wheel drive trailers. So it's not a full-size trailer. And apparently several have already made it down this way, down through it. And there's this kid, looks like he's maybe 10 or 12 years old, standing there like like in the spotter position. And the, the Pathfinder, and I'm not sure which, which vehicle it is, but I think it's a Pathfinder. Um, the Pathfinder doesn't line up properly on the chute going down. Oh no! So the the uh, passenger side tire actually goes on some of the dirt that is not uh, the slope down, so it starts the start the the it starts rolling over as it's going down oh, the vertical. No. But but because the the little chute area is so small, it has nowhere to go except down and straight. So it all it really it lines itself back out after it kind of rubs on the fender. And if you guys haven't seen this, I, I know several of you are screaming, yeah, I've seen that. It's just amazing. I'm frantically Google searching as we speak. So, <laughs> so <laughs> I'll try to put this up in the show notes. But uh, <laughs> one of the things, somebody posted it recently is the reason why I'm remembering uh, it. And I'd okay. seen it uh, two, three years ago. And uh, the, my comment, it was on Facebook. My comment was, fire that spotter. Because <laughs> it was obviously like a 10-year-old kid standing there, you know, and waving stuff. And but. <laughs> didn't tell the driver that 
one tire is going not going down the chute it's staying there on the ledge and yeah, it, it, now i've 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 had to go against the better judgment of a spotter before uh it's i could tell this guy has maybe had a couple beers uh, in the last <laughs> couple hours or something like that maybe he doesn't quite have all of his wits with him maybe Does he he's even not drive a four-wheel ex- drive a very experienced wheeler <laughs> Was he uh, kicked out of a four-wheel drive, and now he's spotting? Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, yeah, yeah. How'd you get here anyways? You know, one of those things. Uh, so and it's just like, you know, no, I'm, I'm not going to go that way. I know this trail. I may not exactly know right where my wheels, where my tires are, but I know this trail enough to where I know that what you're telling me to do is not what I'm trying to accomplish. Right. And it's not going to get me where I want to go. Yeah, and so I had to do my own thing. Obviously, judgment and and a little bit of common sense goes a long way on the trail. Uh, so, you guys, obviously, your mileage may vary. You guys may have your own horror stories or stories of success mm-hmm. uh, when dealing with a spotter. We would love to hear those. In fact, yes. uh, if you guys have a a uh, a tale that uh, might be interesting as far as what happened during a spot, maybe you were spotting a rig. Uh, and there was a rollover. Maybe uh, somebody was spotting you, and a uh, nasty little bit of carnage happened. And you've well, never been ahead. found, and they've never found you. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> never been found again. Uh, by all means, yeah, give us uh, give us a ring. Shoot us an email, uh, info at jeeptalkshow dot com. Uh, you guys know the number five three zero six seven five four one zero two. But remember, you've only got about ninety seconds. Yep, yep. Uh, well, you can always record it and, and uh, record it on your favorite uh, uh, wave recorder, uh, MP3 recorder, and mail it to us. Uh, as long as it's not over 10 meg, you can send it to info at jeeptalkshow.com. Um, so let's do this one last thing. You know, it's the end of the year, and it's only fitting that we get at least one shot in before 2016. Right. <laughs> Well, I thought it might be interesting uh, to see what your guys is what your guys' takeaway is from 2015. What was your number one highlight? Maybe one uh, a favorite moment on the Jeep Talk Show for 2015. Uh, you know, I've I had a lot of laughs and I've had a lot of fun uh, over the last year. Uh, we've done a lot of uh, silly and and fun things, uh, and and it's really you know we I've been doing this show for for several years now, and Since it's the been early 40s. so much fun. It's been so much fun. <laughs> that, that it's it's hard to distinguish one year from the next. It, it seems like uh, there's there's been landmarks. There's been uh, there's been certain uh, goals that have uh, that have been obtained. There's been certain things that have been accomplished. Certain improvements that we've made. Different milestones. Uh, obviously, our our 100th and again our 200th episode uh, were big deals to us, and of course uh, in the podcasting world as well. Uh, so that was a big deal for me, uh, hitting our 200th episode mm-hmm. uh, and and having you guys here along with us for for that whole ride has been an absolute blast. And and I want to thank all of you out there and the sound of my voice for for being such great listeners and and helping us make this what this this show has become. Well, you know, uh, I don't, uh, I can't remember any one specific instance on the show, but something that uh, that does strike me is that. Um, we had a big ad this year with uh, Tammy joining the show. And uh, although you've been here for, for longer Wait, than Wait, who? <laughs> when did this happen? <laughs> although you've been here longer voices. longer than a year, Josh, it was uh, a big uh, a big ad for me uh, to actually have somebody to bounce things off of, ideas, uh, uh, coming up with uh, uh, stuff that we could do to make the show uh, sound better. Uh, that's the, It was a, a, a huge thing having you join the show and Tammy join the show and and with uh, Cody joining us as a, a contributor, uh, John, uh, pre-runner 1982, Steve 4.3, LXJ, all sticking in there for another year. Those are the things that really stick out in my mind is all the contributors. And, of course, the listeners that uh, contribute their time to listen to the show and call in voicemails. And uh, I think, and I'm hoping that we're going to see more uh, vendors out there uh, contacting us. So that we can uh, <laughs> talk trash on their product. Now, <laughs> actually give them ideas about how they can improve their product. And I think that's what we've done with the, the Jeep's Needs folks. Uh, we didn't say make it free. Now, I think that would be the thing that everybody would say. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, uh, and uh, it, it just, it's, very, it's, it's very much an honor to have people just stop and listen uh, to me. And I, I think... You guys feel the same way. Listen to Wait, you. About I'm sorry, I wasn't. Listening. What you have, what you have to say. So, um, it's it just uh, it, it it just makes me feel good. Uh, it makes me feel good about doing this show. It's it's there's a good reason for doing this because the people care about it. I think for me, 
And my favorite part is just every day being here. But the some favorite moments was the Henway joke. <laughs> That's my favorite moment. Yeah, that, that really <laughs> broke me in. Uh, broke the ice. Um, uh, that was a good time. And then the other oh. thing was I had a really good time with four of us when Cody was on the show and it just was something new and different. And, mm -hmm. you know, it was just a really good time. We need to do more of that. Uh, yeah. We can have, uh, we can, uh, Josh, don't make a joke. We need to have more four ways. It'll be a lot. Uh, it's a lot. We've, we've, four by four. we've proven that it works and it's great having a guest that can uh, join us and uh, talk to us. And, and uh, we need to have some guests uh, to, to join in, talk to us and cut up. I'm glad you mentioned that, Tony, because we, we've said something many, many times at the end of every show where we have a third seat open or a, in this case now a fourth seat open now that Tammy has joined us and filled that third seat. Guys, we're always looking for your stories out there. We know that that you or somebody you know that you wheel with is a great storyteller. Even not has a, a fun or an interesting incident uh, or uh, or something that has happened over the years on or off road uh, that uh, that would be interesting to and fun to tell here on the show. Uh, and you don't have to spin a yarn like Nikki G does. You don't have to have that level of, uh, of comedic genius or anything like that. You don't have to have the production value that. Uh, that John pre runner 1982 does or the uh, technical background that Steve 4.3 LXJ does. You just have to have a story. You just have to have a passion for a Jeep and, uh, and the willingness to share it with us. And, and in 2016 guys, I want to hear more from you out there. After all, this is a Jeep show, the Jeep talk show. And, uh, and we'd love to have more guests on the show and that can be you. That's right. You who are listening to this right now on your uh, iPad or, iPod through iTunes, whatever. We want to have you guys on the show. And so if you're out there and you got an interesting story to tell, please let us know. We will set you up. We'll figure out how to make it happen and uh, and how to get you on the show for at least one episode to tell a story, if nothing, if nothing else. Well, that's it for this week, guys. If you've got an event coming up in your area, by all means, let's get the word out. Whether it's a show and shine, a cruise in, a club run, or even a fundraiser, or a huge event like the Easter Jeep Safari, let us know by giving us a call or sending us an email to info at jeeptalkshow.com. And of course, Jeepers, we know you guys are making purchases all the time for the Jeeps out there. We see it in our Amazon You Bought What segment. Next time you guys order your Jeep parts, make sure you ask the business if they know about the Jeep Talk Show. Let them know just how much you enjoy our podcast. If you're buying a product or a service from a vendor because of a review or a discussion you heard here on the show, make sure you let that vendor know. If they don't already know about us, be sure and tell them about the one and only Jeep Talk Show. Well, we certainly hope you guys had a great 2015 uh, personally and with the, the Jeep Talk Show. We had a name change. We've added uh, new personnel. And uh, we're even doing more product reviews. So that's all things that came to us in 2015 that are going to continue with us in 2016, which, among other things, you don't know what else is coming up. So uh, please stay with us. And, uh, well, we just hope you uh, really enjoy the show and continue to join enjoy the show with us much, much longer in the future. And here's to a great 2016, Tony and Josh, and everyone listening out there. Cheers. Are you drinking again? Yeah. Woo. <laughs> Starting <laughs> early. <laughs> my we wife. We have nothing more to drink. My wife was uh, seeing the, the Jeep commercial that I did, and, I, and, and several times I was picking up this big mug and taking drinks out of the, in the video, and she says, do people know what you're drinking in that? They, they think that's, oh. they think that's beer. No, it's actually tea. It's just a, uh, Non-sweet iced tea. So Long Island iced tea. That is. <laughs> I heard, I've heard this those things are really kick your ass. Juice. Yeah, that's what you tell the kids, right? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Well, guys, we have a whole nother year of this kind of uh, <laughs> shenanigans. And, and, uh, <laughs> these shenanigans. Yeah, it's just going to be a lot of fun, guys. 2016 is going to be an epic year for the Jeep Talk Show. We want to make sure that you guys are a part of it as well. Uh, we hope to hear from you guys. We hope that you guys will help us spread the word and make this thing grow even bigger in the years to come. So uh, all of our social media accounts, make sure you guys are on there often and make sure you have subscribed to each and every one of our feeds so you don't miss a thing. Just like voting early and often. Hey, what did you guys get for Christmas? Tammy, you got something purple, I know. Yeah, a spiderweb shade. 
Oh, nice, nice. I got a new drill and drive impact driver combo kit. Cool. I got a yeah. hatchet. I was telling everybody I got an axe on social media just to make them nervous. It's a pretty bitty one. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's, just, it's a little a little bitty hatchet, you know, that has the, uh, it's a great little survival thing. Nice, uh, nice. You're going to store that in the Jeep, maybe get a uh, little spot for it. Actually, I'm doing a little bug out bag with a lot of medical okay. supplies. There you go, yeah. And uh, so I, I've actually attached it to that as kind of a, a grab the bag and go type situation. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I uh, decided to uh, put one of those together. Uh, I don't know. Maybe we can, uh, uh, I don't know if anybody would be interested in a bug out bag uh, uh, little segment or not. But I think, I, a, I think a, a, a nice little walkthrough video might be pretty good. What does Tony put in his bug out bag? Hopefully we can find a video of that coming up on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Jeep Talk Show. Yep, yep. So until next week, I hope everybody has a wonderful New Year's and a safe New Year's. Don't roll over anything, and that includes Aunt Clara. Uh, yeah, don't so, drink and drive, people. <laughs> yeah, don't drink and drive, and certainly don't uh, rut and drive. Uh, <laughs> so until next week, this is Tony. This is Josh. I'm Tammy. Have a great Jeep week. And a Happy New Year, too. Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs> where's, the, where's the little noisemakers? Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's it. That's it. <laughs> Warning, the Jeep Talk Show is intended for entertainment purposes only. Use as directed. Any relation to actual information, real Jeeps, or persons living or dead are purely coincidental. The Jeep Talk Show is not responsible for lost or stolen items, and some assembly is required. For a full list of restrictions and contest rules, see store for details. Batteries not included. The Jeep Talk Show is for external use only. Contents under pressure. Side effects may include vertigo, uncontrollable laughter, or greasy discharge, and false kung fu powers. The Jeep Talk Show and its contents are known to cause cancer in the state of California. It is probably not a federal law to use this product in a manner inconsistent with its labeling. The Jeep Talk Show may be a choking hazard. Keep out of reach of small children. All safety precautions must be observed when using the Jeep Talk Show. If you feel you've reached this recording in error, please hang up and try your call again. What a great thing to put on a t-shirt, choking hazard.